Hello, it's me again, Matthew from Matthew North Music. Hope you're all well on this fine day. Today, I'm going to do a video that's actually going to kind of be in two parts. It might even be in three parts. Uh, but I thought I would do an unboxing. And it's an unboxing of what's in this box. Now, I've wanted to get one of these for a while. And as you can maybe see, if I lift it up, it's come from Tommen in Germany, where if you're a musician, you're very familiar with that website because they are pretty much one of the biggest retailers of musical equipment in the world. And they also are pretty competitive on price. Now, the contents of this box came to me for 88 UK pounds shipped. So that's coming from uh, Germany and 88 quid directly to my door. And inside here is one of Tolman's guitar kits. Now, I've never built a kit guitar before. I mean, I've, I've put together guitars out of old bits and stuff, including a almost total disaster fitting a, a new neck to a, a, a strap body and not getting the holes in the right place. And it's like it was nearly a complete disaster, but it was salvaged eventually. But I thought I'd have a go at knocking up one of these kits. Now, I'm not going to be building this guitar anytime soon because I've got a few other projects on the go before that. But in case anyone was interested in seeing what's inside one of these kits, I thought I'd open up the box, let you have a look. And as I go through, I'll give you some kind of idea of how I feel the quality of parts, etc., are in one of these kits. But bear in mind, this kit was 80 i think it was 88 pounds including shipping i think it was like 80 quid for the for the kit so uh, let's whip the box apart and we'll have a look at what's inside here's our box then and uh how do we open this let's open it from the top i guess And we have box number two. We've got a little piece of paper that was inside the box. This is just basically about return shipping and things. And there's a little uh, colouring in sheet. <coughs> we told me you always get a colouring in sheet should you want to uh, doodle away. Here's our main box anyway, and I'm just gonna undo the sellotape with some scissors. I'm just gonna undo one side because I wanna seal this back up in a bit. And we've got some more boxes inside. Right, so three boxes. Now, we also have two booklets, one in German, one in English, so we're going to look at the English book first. Here's our construction book then, and if we look at the first page, we've got our table of contents. We've then got a list of all the parts that should be in here. So we've got a scratch plate with the controls. It does look like it may actually already be wired up, which is a bit of a shame because you think when you're building a kit, you'd actually want to solder everything together. But then we've got various screws, set of strings. We've got the neck, which is, as you can see here, hasn't been cut. Uh, we've got a bridge and saddle there, our back plate, our machine heads, an Allen key for setting the machine, the, uh, the uh, bridge. And we've got, I don't quite know what that is. We'll see it when we open it up, it's probably something obvious. And even got a jack cable. And then we follow through our instructions. So we've got how to paint the body. And it's going to go into probably what sort of paint you want to use and what sort of lacquers and things that you'd, you'd want to use. We then have um, bolting the neck onto the guitar and how to do that and then we've got um, how to threading the earth wire through to the bridge from the pre-wired um, 
scratch plate. We've then got the mounting of the bridge and saddle and attaching that and uh, marking holes and things for the scratch plate. Fitting of the pickups. And then we're gradually moving on to fitting the bridge and the saddle, etc. Adjusting the truss rod. So maybe that little Allen key was actually a truss rod adjuster. It might have been bigger than it looked. I'm not sure. There might be two Allen keys in here. Yes, it will be because it's got a picture of a screwdriver there for adjusting the saddle. And fitting the strap buttons. And then that's it. So the, the booklet actually does look pretty good and it's got most things listed in there that you'd expect to see. So yeah, it's a good, good set of instructions. I didn't actually think there would be a set of instructions coming with this kit. So the contents of this box then, we lift, we lift the top off, there's our body. And it's been very well packed, good thick bubble wrap. And yeah, it's, it's fairly light and it's, it's been, it's pretty smooth actually. Um, yeah, it's, it's rather nice actually. Um, the space has been cut out for the pickups and all the other holes have been routed. They, all the holes are actually drilled for the scratch plate, which is, which is good. And I mean, this, this body actually, it, you could almost with this, I think, you could have it exactly as it is and not do anything to it. Although it's probably be advisable to put some sort of wax in it or, or something. As for painting, I'm not sure what I'd want to do, to be honest with this body. Because uh, I do quite like it. I mean, the grain's quite nice. I mean, you can see it's different pieces of wood glued together to make the body. And sort of here you can see it's quite noticeable the two different shades of wood in fact if i zoom the camera in you would get a better view of it so you can probably see here where the different shades of wood are different however it's still a nice looking piece of wood and i think if you stained it it would look fine but i think i probably will paint it because i've never painted a guitar before and it would be interesting just to see what the results would be Anyway, that's our guitar body. I'm going to pop it back into its into its little bag and pop it into its box. And just for safekeeping, I'm going to put my two instruction booklets in there as well. I mean, it's nice that now I've unboxed it, it will take up far less room than the original box, which is good. Now, in here should be all our bits and bobs. I'll tell you what I'm going to do first. I'm going to open this one first because this should be the neck. So let's have a look at our neck. Again, very nicely packed inside some bubble wrap. And Yes, the neck feels very nice. Um, obviously, it's going to need some oil or something on the on the fretboard, but it's it's very nice. The holes are pre-drilled into the back, which is a good thing because, as I said, I did build a guitar once, and I didn't do that, and I drilled them myself, and I got them slightly skewed with. And here we've got the headstock that hasn't yet been cut. And that's because it's the idea is you can have whatever design you want on there. Now, because this guitar is kind of a, a sort of Fender Jaguar kind of shape, I probably will cut this in a, you know, a, a, a suitable sort of Fender shape. Um, how I'm going to cut this, I'm not sure yet. But I think I'll probably look up some templates on the internet and see if I can get a template that I can put over this. And then I'll do a rough cut of the shape and then use a file and sandpaper to get it down to the exact shape that I want. But, you know, this is a nice, this is a nice quality neck. I mean, it feels comfortable. 
there's no I can't feel any bumps or nicks on on here at all as to whether it'll stay like that after I finish building it I don't know but that's a good quality neck and certainly if I was buying a, a replacement neck for a guitar as long as it's not you know something major I mean I, to be honest I wish I'd bought one of these when I was throwing together that guitar that I built rather than one that didn't have holes drilled in it. But uh, yeah, not nice neck. And let's, let's have a look at the straightness of it. Absolutely pretty much bang on that. Yeah, that is, that's as straight as you're gonna get. This is our final box. And in here's all our bits and bobs. So we'll start with this. This is our scratch plate. I'm gonna take it out of the bag. And as it was suggested in the instruction manual, it comes pre-wide. Got a jack socket, volume and tone, and a selector. And it looks like the pickups are actually on a, on a connector. Now, my first thought with this is that I could be tempted to maybe replace these with screened wire, but a lot of guitars don't have screened wire on the pickups. It just depends if it picks up any hum or not, but it's it's a tempting idea to do that. But saying that, you know, these are pretty solid. And if we look at the other side, we have our, our scratch plate. Now, the scratch plate has a piece of cellophane plastic over the top, which means we will need to take everything off the scratch plate to remove the plastic and then put everything back on. Now, it's got this not great quality switch. It's a bit like, a, it's a Les Paul type switch and not really the sort of thing you'd expect to see on a Fender style guitar, but it's what's on it. And it's got Fender-ish style knobs. And these are slightly smaller pots. They're not the sort of size that you'd expect on on guitars normally so again that's like probably a cost cutting exercise but you know as i said this kit's only 80 quid but otherwise the scratch plate seems okay to me but whatever happens when i do finish building this kit i will put it together stock and then give a demo of it stock and then if I make any modifications, I will do those afterwards. Right, so we've got this bag here of bits and bobs. It's actually quite heavy, which is always a good sign. Now, we've got a set of strings. I do not think for one minute they will be of significant quality, and I certainly won't be using them. But I will use them as I'm building it, just for testing purposes. Now, here's one of our pickups. And it's wrapped in some nice little tissue paper. Let's open him up. There we go. Now our pickup is wired with screened wire. And I think it's safe to say there's probably enough length on here that I can wire this directly to the switch and not use the um, this cable here and connect it together. So that will go and I will wire this in straight. Um, but these are, you know, that says B on the back, so that must be our bridge pickup. And these are, you know, what they are, they're just sort of P90-ish style pickups. Uh, I think there's some screw holes in the middle here. And I think these are what will attach the pickup to the body, and then the cover will go back on although it might the screws might you might just go through the middle it's, it's something like that and then there'll be springs underneath so you know they're they're what they are ultimately if i keep this guitar i may well change those i may well change the pickups and that means i will probably also change the scratch plate because the other pickups might not fit in that scratch plate i kind of think of jaguar guitars and similar shapes as being single coil guitars, but you know, we'll see what we get. See what we get now. 
here we have our truss rod adjustment Allen key, the hex key, whatever you like to call it, and there's a, a cheapo guitar lead. I'm not going to use that guitar lead at all for anything to do with guitars, but I will stick that in my jack box for everything I use in my modular synthesizer. Now then, let's have some more bits and bobs. Here, in this bag, if I can open it, I mean, you know, you know, a lot of people say there was a lot of waste of plastic on these things, and, and I think you're probably correct. However, it does also make things easier. But maybe in the future, they might decide, guitar companies might decide to start using, you know, paper bags instead, because I think that would be much, much better, really. Okay, so we've got a load of screws here. Now, these bolts here, these are our four bolts to hold the neck onto the guitar. We have our strap buttons and we have the felt pads for the strap buttons as well that you can see there. These are probably our pickup screws. There's four of those, like so. And we also have one, two, three, four springs like that. And that's gonna be our springs for the for the pickups. And we then have a bunch of other screws and things. There's two more of these longer screws here. These will be our screws to hold the uh, strap buttons on the guitar. And then we've got some standoff spacers here. And we've got some other screws and some other little clips. I think these are, I don't know what this is. This is, um, that's our string retainer. So this goes on the neck to hold the strings down going into the into the tuners. So we've got two of those and two retainers. And there's some an assortment of other screws which are going to be the screws to hold the jack socket on. Oh no, the jack socket's on the, on the scratch plate. But there are some screws here that will be for that those retainers. And the rest of these are going to be screws. Yeah, because they're, they're smaller here. So that's a smaller screw, so that's probably for the retainer and maybe something else. And these slightly fatter screws here, they're going to be our screws for the scratch plate. Anyway, let's pop all that back in its bag. Next, we've got this. These, that's our back plate for the guitar. Pretty standard. And there's like this plastic panel here that the back plate sits into, so it that's the shiny side so it goes in like that so that that's what you have on the back of your guitar i'm quite tempted to take this down to the local engravers shop and i might get matthew north music or something engraved on the back because i think that would be quite quite good fun next we have this packet of bits now i'm not going to tip all of this out because it's going to be a lot of repetition but we will have a machine head the screw thread for the machine head that will go in like so. Are there any washers as well? Yep, there's a wash. Right, let's just tip some of this out. Okay, so we've got our, our machine head. And we have our washer and our nut. It looks like that, and then that goes on like that. So they then go on our neck. Now, these machine heads... Yeah, they're not brilliant. They're okay. They're okay. I wonder if they might need tightening or greasing or something. They're not the best quality machine heads. And are there any screws in it? Right, there's no screws in here. So those extra screws that I thought we had in the last packet are actually the screws for the machine heads. But they're not great. These aren't great. I might be tempted to actually buy another set and pop them on. I don't know yet. As I say, I, I think I do want to build this guitar stocks and I will use them. Hopefully they'll be okay. And our last packet is this lot. And in here, what do we have? Well, we got our bridge and saddle. So there's our saddle. Like so. Pretty standard, really. In fact, it's a standard Les Paul style. And 
and in here we should have a tunomatic bridge of some description yep, there it is there's our our tunomatic bridge now that is exactly as you would expect our little tuners here and there's our uh, our nuts to fit it in. Now, I do have a, tune, a spare tunematic, which is actually a Fishman Power Bridge, which I used to have on one of my Les Pauls, but I took it off and put the original back on. If it's the same size, which I think it might be, because the other one didn't never fitted properly, I could be tempted to put that on this guitar as well, but we'll see. Anyway, there's our our tunematic bridge. But again, it's not the highest end parts, but it's not, you know, I mean, compared to the cheap guitars that we used to get in the 80s, what we've got here is, is you know, much better quality. Once I've unpacked everything and it's all in its individual boxes, it's not going to take up much space. And I will keep you posted as and when I get to put this guitar together. But it's actually, on the face of it, it's a really nice little kit. I mean, I know you can buy one of these guitars from Harley Benton slash tom and ready built for not much more than a hundred quid but that's not the point the point is just to have a go at throwing this together and i know this isn't guitar building as such it's not luthering it's just putting together some pre-cut bits but even so i think for a lot of people it could it could really inspire you into becoming a guitar maker in the future and i think something like that's a good thing and certainly for a someone young i think they they have a field day putting this together well that just about wraps up this video for now and at some point in the future i will do some follow-up videos of me building the guitar and what it sounds like and any modifications that i may do to the guitar afterwards if you've enjoyed this video please think about subscribing to the channel and do please take a look at the other videos i have on here because there's much more guitar and music related content here and to come Anyway, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next one.